2020. We've only seen half of this year and it has been a lot. A global pandemic, a deadly virus, a cancellation of life as we know it, protest and outrage around the world over racism and hatred in American streets. And these past three months have felt like three years at least. They're hard times, heavy times. There are so many emotions and opinions over all the things, and sometimes the intensity of these emotions and opinions can be overwhelming. I want to encourage you more than ever to engage in practices that bring you to the feet of Jesus. We need him desperately. We need his words, his teachings, his heart, his embrace. We need his strength and his passion and his compassion during these days. And as devoted students and followers of Christ, everything that we do, everything that we say, everything we believe must be surrendered and entrusted to him. We are daily in the process always of dying to ourselves so that Christ might live in us. So in all that is going on right now, let us not neglect Christ as the source and the heartbeat of our words and our actions. If we speak against injustice, let it be because Christ speaks against injustice. If we seek to forgive and to be forgiven, let it be because Christ teaches us to humble ourselves and to forgive our brothers and sisters. Whatever we do, whatever we say, Whatever we believe, let it be because of Christ. Justice is important to Christ. Spreading awareness about what's wrong in the world and then helping to make those wrong things right is important to Christ. And we're often very good about the former and weaker on the latter, the doing or doing effectively. Because social media is so accessible, it, it is an incredible tool for spreading the word about a crisis or an injustice or a cause quickly, especially for people whose voices are ignored or silenced offline. And although so much good can be done through social media, there can still be downsides to social media activism. In the age of social media, it's easy to send a tweet or post a selfie or post a black square to participate in a cause. For many of us though, that's where our justice work ends. So is writing a great post really all it takes to make a difference in the world? Is posting a black square enough? Or is it possible that justice is about something more than a hashtag? In the scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it reads this, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. You are God's masterpiece, a work of art created to do his work. Now in this series, we're going to be talking about some of the good works that we can do in the name of Jesus, good works that right wrongs in Jesus' name. But before we get there, we need to talk about you and me and others. We must start this conversation by reminding ourselves that you and I and every person, even the ones that we completely disagree with, are all made in the image of God. We are all God's masterpieces and the image of God in each of us should be honored and protected. And when it is not, that is an injustice we must make right. We each were created with unique qualities and strengths and abilities and experiences that are all your own. Those are all important details of the masterpiece that God created you to be, and these are unique to each of us. Which is why learning to listen to each other's experiences and perspectives and stories is so very important. And as God's masterpiece, you were created for a purpose, to do good works that God designed. And the Bible has a lot to say about how the people of God are called and sent to do good works. 
We are given a mission by God directly. And as part of that mission, we are commanded over and over again to fight to make wrong things right in the world. That's what we mean when we say justice. One of the most well-known passages of scripture on this subject is in the Old Testament book called Micah. Micah was a prophet of God who God sent to call out the unjust rulers of his day, to fight for the victims of injustice and to rally God's people to fight for change. And this is what it says in Micah 6, 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Now it was common back then for Jews to make elaborate sacrifices and offerings to God at the temple. And these sacrifices were designed to please God. And in verses six and seven of this passage, that's what Micah was pointing out. But then Micah says something very countercultural in verse eight. He says God doesn't really care about all of that. Instead of making a ton of showy sacrifices at the temple, Micah told God's people that God would rather have them live out a faith that results in justice, mercy, and humility. God isn't looking for a faith that comes to church and says the right things and believes the right things and does the right things. He's looking for a faith that goes outside of the four walls and makes a difference in the world in the name of Christ. He's calling his people to do something, not just anything, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. Now there is so much wrong in the world around us. Sometimes it seems like everywhere we look, we see brokenness and tragedy and injustice. And the magnitude of the world's injustice, our nation's injustice, can seem overwhelming. And you've probably heard me say before, do something. But instead of feeling really inspired or motivated, you, you feel helpless or unsure of where to start. And if that's you, like me, here are a few things that I hope will encourage you. First of all, God is the miracle worker, not us. God is calling you and me to join him on his mission of making wrong things right in the world, but it's ultimately his mission. He is the miracle worker. God wants to, us to join him on his mission and we join him when we choose to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with him. When we live that kind of faith, God can use us to do incredible things in the world. He can use us to make a difference if we're willing. Secondly, you don't have to do everything. Just do something. It's really easy to become overwhelmed by all that's wrong in the world, but God isn't calling you to do or change everything that needs to be changed. That's just way too much for any one person. As God's masterpiece, his handiwork, you are uniquely designed for a purpose. And I don't know what injustices you are uniquely designed to help with and to make right, but I'm excited to see you discover that for yourself. Because your unique qualities and strengths and abilities and experiences will equip you perfectly for whatever good works God has designed for you to do. You can't change the whole world, but you can be part of changing something. Now, We've said that justice requires us to do something. Micah teaches that. All of scripture teaches us that. We've said that anytime people who would bear the image of God are mistreated or ignored or oppressed, it is an injustice that must be made right. 
We've said that fighting for justice requires a partnership with God, the God of justice. So what can we do? How do we partner with God? According to scripture, orphans and widows should not be in distress. The weak and the fatherless should not be taken advantage of. Mercy and compassion should be shown to the poor and the oppressed. No one should be exploited by the powerful and no one should be voiceless or unheard. And the refugee should be welcomed and given refuge. But you and I aren't usually as passionate about these subjects as God is, are we? We're not always very motivated to care about these issues. In fact, some of these passages that talk about these things might make some of us uncomfortable or even angry. You might read it and think, wait, what is God telling us to do? That can't be right. If justice is about righting wrongs, we sometimes need to begin by righting the wrongs in our own hearts. Because sometimes the fight for justice begins with confronting and uprooting the sins of greed and pride and lust and idolatry and hard hearts, which can cloud our vision for justice. Gary Hogan of the International Justice Mission has said this, over time, I have come to see questions of suffering in the world, not so much as questions of God's character, but as questions about the obedience and faith of God's people. When it comes to justice, God has given us responsibility. As we've learned so far, our responsibility is to do something, to love mercy and to act justly. That is our act of obedience toward God. But how? God's word speaks about helping orphans, widows, the poor, the oppressed, the weak, the fatherless, and the foreigner. But what exactly are we supposed to do? Well, one of the first steps we can take toward justice is to help meet people's physical needs. What are some ways that we can do that? It might be handing out food and water or hygiene bags to homeless or local charities and organizations. It might be serving food at a local soup kitchen or delivering food to families in need. It might be rallying your friends or your family or your youth group or church to provide free school supplies at the start of the school year. Maybe coordinate a Christmas toy drive just meeting physical needs. Another step we can take is relational, that sometimes when we think about justice, all we think about is meeting the physical needs, drop something off and leave. But justice is so much more than just giving people clothes or money or food. Justice can mean giving the gift of relationships to others, and it can mean receiving the gift of relationships from someone else, or even leveraging our relationships for justice work. So what are some of the ways you can do that? Maybe it's weekly visits, not just a one-time visit to the elderly or the sick or people who are homebound. Maybe it's sharing a meal with a person who is uh, different than you instead of just giving them a meal. Maybe it's teaching ESL classes, English as a second language class to new immigrants who need assistance. Maybe it's engaging in conversation with people who are different from you so that you can learn. Maybe it's volunteering at church or a local organization as a mentor. Maybe you identify a justice issue you want to learn more about and you find a mentor who can help guide and educate you in that area. Maybe you educate your friends and your family or your circle of influence on a particular justice issue that needs attention and action. And a third level is systemic. Systemic is hard level. And while so much can be done for justice on through one-on-one -on -one interactions or local projects or short-term initiatives, fighting for justice often requires a much deeper dive into the systemic, deeply rooted issues that cause injustice on a large scale. That might require political involvement, activism, protest, and most importantly, consistent and focused prayer and a humble listening heart. Maybe you participate in a march Maybe you protest peacefully. 
Maybe you boycott an oppressive or an unjust business or facility. Campaign by writing letters and making phone calls and reaching out to representatives in the government who can legislate change. Use your voice as soon as you are old enough to do so, vote and pray for change and for wisdom to know how to move in accordance with God's mission and God's heart. Now I know some of the things that we've talked about right now might sound really difficult or overwhelming, but I believe God has equipped you and me and called us to do hard things. And one reminder, there are lots of ways to do what God has called us to do to help right wrongs. You weren't made to do them all. You can't do them all. And we should not judge others for how they go about partnering with God to right the wrongs around us. Now, I want to end by repeating what I said at the beginning. I want to encourage you more than ever to engage in practices that will bring you to the feet of Jesus. We need him desperately. We need his words, we need his teachings, his heart, his embrace. We need his strength and his passion and his compassion during these days. As devoted students and followers of Christ, everything that we do, everything we say, everything we believe must be surrendered and entrusted to him. We are in the process every day of dying to ourselves so that Christ might live in us. So in all that is going on right now, let us never neglect Christ as the source and the heartbeat of our words and our actions. If we speak against injustice, let it be because Christ speaks against injustice. If we seek to forgive and to be forgiven, let it be because Christ teaches us to humble ourselves and to forgive our brothers and sisters. Whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we believe, let it be because of Christ. Mm -hmm.